All right, in two days, it will be the five-year anniversary of the very first AEW pay-per-view, Double or Nothing. This is the uh, five-year anniversary show, almost to the day, actually. Uh, This would be Saturday, in fact. The pay-per-view this weekend is on Sunday. But uh, five years of AEW pay-per-views, Dave. So five years of AEW as far as from the first. I mean, the the company was formed, I guess, um, I guess you dated to January. The first, the original announcement was January 1st, 2019. But the first show was the Double or Nothing show in Las Vegas. And in five years, I mean, it's it's been very interesting for these five years. I mean, it's a, certainly a learning experience. Um, I think that the uh, the highs of the promotion... If you would, if you had said January first or or before the Double or Nothing show in Vegas, I mean, we knew the company was going to come out strong because the Double or Nothing show sold out instantly. You know, they put tickets on sale I think in February or whatever day it was. It was in February. Um, I remember I was there when they had the uh, they they did that press conference uh, that they streamed and they put out a ticket code. You know, basically a code to buy tickets. And I remember backstage, it's like, we got, uh, they, they'd gotten 20,000, um, basically, um, people who had asked for codes. And I said, dude, you're already sold out. 20,000 people asking for tickets. They're going to, you know, not that it's necessarily 20,000 different people and not necessarily that every single one of them is going to want to buy tickets, but the ones who will are going to buy, you know, an average of three tickets a person probably. So anyway, it was, it was, it, it, you know, once those tickets were, you know, or once the codes were out and they sold the tickets, it sold out instantly. So it started out very, very strong. Um, but as far as like the long-term prognosis, I mean, you know, they, uh, you know, the TV wasn't starting until October, which was the key. Um, and there was a lot of, a lot of big contracts um, that were signed uh, to get the thing off, to get name, you know, the big names, because the reality is, is that WWE had offered, had made big offers for every single one of the people involved, um, you know, from the start and, or every, every key person. And so Tony had to, I mean, when he first made the offers, well, he had a very good feeling that he would get the TV, the the um, TV on TNT, the Dynamite show, it was not guaranteed. So, I mean, they put like millions and millions of dollars of expenses out there without even the knowledge for sure of a television show, but a probability. But even then, you know, the television show was not going to make them any money at first other than you know an ad revenue split i mean like the original deal was not one and there would be very few shows um you know they were planning i think they were planning originally on doing more shows there was a lot of plans at first one of the ideas in the first year was um to have like the the main talent go to japan you know about once a month for new japan shows to continue that relationship but new japan um Harold May and, you know, who was the guy in charge of New Japan, he nixed that right away, basically just, you know, ex-nade everyone there. Uh, The only ones, essentially, what I, you know, I was there when it all went down and, and, you know, he basically, you know, wouldn't, you know, he thought that they were going to fail. And, um, you know, I remember there being told this company run by wrestlers, it's never going to make it. And I said, like, you know, they're probably getting TV on TNT. And um, that's a big deal in the United States. And it's just like a company run by wrestlers. Come on. With no experience running a company. You know. So they just figured it was going to die and everybody would come back. And I was basically told, you know, when I was, you know, there, I go like, you know, I mean, essentially the key people, which were, um, you know, Young Bucks, Cody Rhodes. um, I think Marty Skrull was still involved at that point even though he was under contract to ring of honor but he was kind of in that group which and he never ended up he ended up staying with ring of honor and then his career ended up you know basically dissipating and um and then um but the 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 only ones that new New japan's basic thing was at that time when this all went down was that kenny's not going to go which of course they were wrong about um the rest of them will go 
the Young Bucks were not that important to that level. Um, Cody Rhodes was not that important to that level. The two ones that were very important were Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho, and we'll have both of them. And as it turned out, I mean, you know, they did get dates on Chris Jericho later, I, I believe. But um, and I think he, he last went to DDT. But um, and then Omega never went back until you know they they opened up the relationship, and he went back for that one Tokyo Dome match with Will Ospreay. So, um, but so the thing opened at that level, and then after, you know, it was really interesting because you know the TV started pretty strong, went down to a certain level, kind of steadied out later, and there was a lot of big highs. I don't think that anybody would have ever expected, you know, a show that would do eighty thousand. I don't think people expected uh, that first pay per view to do, which did one hundred eleven thousand buys. I don't think anyone expected anything close to that. Um, can, you know, consistently for the years, almost every pay per view over a hundred thousand. I think there's a couple that were just shy of it, but almost every one. Here we are, five years in. Um, you know, the attendance right now certainly not good um, for the shows. Um, five years in, but there were periods where the attendance was 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 great. Uh, ratings generally good, although obviously falling now. They're at the weakest point now with. Uh, you know, in the contract year, the worst time to be at the weakest point. But cables change, too. So, I mean, there's a lot of different things. But the one thing, um, I mean, you know, it's funny looking back, and it's kind of like, you know, like, what's the what, what, what do you think of it? And there's, you know, obviously a lot of mistakes were made over the years. Um, a lot, there was a lot of success. There were, you know, I, I think more success than could have ever been expected. At the same time, is it has it been a profitable business? Not yet. Um, and I know that when they started the business, I mean, the I don't think that no matter what anyone says now, I don't believe that the goal was that they would that they were starting a business to make a profit six years in. I think the goal was they knew that the, I think that they knew full well that it would not be profitable in uh 2019 could not be it's going to be a big big losses that first year but i think the hope was by 2020 or 2021 that it would be profitable and you know certain things happened it did not get to that level um a lot you know they spent a lot more on contracts i think than uh expected um over the years um and things like that but um you know i mean it, at, at the same time it did you know, if you look at, at the, uh, it, it accomplished something that no other company had done. You know, it helped uh, spring, you know, pro wrestling to the um, biggest period it has had since, you know, the end of the so-called Attitude Era. Helped WWE greatly because they had upped their game. And when they upped their game, their business went up. Um, I think that the one thing that was that I was really surprised about that I did not see coming was the amount of negativity um, from fans and others to the success and, you know, the wishes of the failure. And, and it, and that's been something um, that I think has been, a, you know, has greatly affected the company was that feeling of, um, I mean, I knew that there would be certain people. I knew for sure, for sure, there would be certain people who were going to be negative on it no matter what. And, and no matter how successful it was or was not, they were going to be negative on it. And I thought they were going to be voices in the wilderness. I did not realize the two things was um, the, you know, just how many people would be taking that tact and you know really bank on the thing dying and and it, it actually turned into a, a almost a, an industry of people you know you know basically trying to make their living based on the idea that aw is folding and tony khan is an idiot and he's a money mark and all that while you know while the company was successful and now when it is less popular it's even louder and and you know and and granted some of the criticism is very valid um and some of it is like ridiculous and but that was the one i didn't expect i really thought that uh after the 
you know, period from whatever it was, 2002 to 2019, because TNA never got anywhere near this level, nor did anyone else. New Japan never. New Japan had some success for sure, you know, in the sold out Madison Square Garden show and things like that, but never anything consistently to this level. Nobody had. And the WWE dominance had not made wrestling particularly exciting. It had been okay. Um, but um, and 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 the comeback there, you know, the, the the independent scene really did come back, you know, whatever it was, 2016, 2017, 2018 in Europe and in the United States, and that opened up the door. It basically opened up the door for AEW to start. It's not like AEW started without some tools, and it was there was an independent wrestling. Um, I don't want to call it boom, but there was certainly. There was certainly a lot of success in independent wrestling doing an alternative style to WWE, but everyone was behind those people. Everybody was looking at those people as being, as being um, you know, it was like, you know, I, I saw no negativity, you know, other than some people who were just mad that anyone was having success, but they were like, they were the voices in the wilderness, you know, that nobody took them seriously. And I thought that the same thing would kind of happen with AEW. But as AEW got more successful and started, um, you know, doing big numbers at first, um, there was it, 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 it did become something that, like, I don't think anyone expected. I mean, from day one, from that first show, that first double or nothing, you know, people started making up. It was all scalpers. And it, this didn't count. And, uh, you know, from, you know, from you know no matter what the evidence was so it's been kind of an interesting five years they are at their most important period now from aside from year one right now and they were at their strongest point as far as revenue that they've ever been by far but they are at their weakest point as far as popularity from since they have started so it's a very interesting period and obviously you know the biggest story Aside from the launch and aside from even more than the success at Wembley, which is probably the biggest single event they did, but the biggest story um, they've ever had, bigger than Punk signing, which ended up being absolutely gigantic, both good and bad. But the biggest story is this television deal that's going to be made or not made or made at a certain level, whatever that level is, between now and the end of the year. So... Rob, but what are your thoughts as far as like the overview of the five? I knew years? you were going to talk for fifteen minutes and ask my thoughts. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I have no thoughts at this particular moment. You about covered everything. I'll have a lot of thoughts when we get into this double or nothing card, though. Yeah. And the uh, and the dynamite show here tonight, but uh, it certainly did better than pretty much any other startup I've ever seen. I saw a million. Oh yeah. Companies. Oh well, we got this guy's going to start. He's got money. He's got this or that. And uh, you know, every single time it was nothing became of it, other than t- but, other than TNA. But I will say, for for whatever reason, and probably because of the people involved, it was when everyone started talking about this new AEW and getting this thing going. I mean, it felt like it was going to be something, and it was the perfect time to start. There was no better time to uh, go up against it, it, WWE. It, it, it was it was the best time it to start. It was the best time in, in and 20 not, years not, to run not, opposition. Not not and it's not because of WWE. It was the best time to start because of the indie boom that had preceded. No, it was also because of WWE. WWE had been weaker it, years earlier. No, not no. I mean, WWE, WWE in 2010 was far weaker. It was far work. It was far weaker, but like much still, weaker. WWE, WWE, WWE. When when TNA started wasn't even a bad time because WWE was on the way down then. Well, I think that TNA was a little early. But if you look at WWE, WWE by by um, this is 2019. WWE was fucking strong as hell in 2019. But you're, I mean, I'm looking wise, at this as a different way. I'm not, I don't care about business. I'm talking about as a as a fan who has watched WWE, WWF since 1987. Yeah, 2018, 2019, 2020. Compared was to 2020, absolutely. Compared to like 2013, no fucking yes, way. Yes, I will. 2013, I will fight this to my death. You can fight it to your this death. Was I remember worst. I remember watching like Raws for years and years and years, and it was like torture. It was there were periods of torture. It was getting. It, it got better as the years went on. 
Um, I mean, the low point, I will say the low point was during the pandemic, but that was out of their control. But WWE, by that point, they had, as far as, and WWE also, this, this is also a big difference between the WCW run, which was very successful. WCW obviously was far more successful than AEW ever was, but it also collapsed um, in a manner that AEW, even though AEW has gone down and collapsed like WCW. And I mean, again, at the end of this year, we will know WCW died. So whatever success that they had for a couple of years essentially ended up hurting the business anyway, because they were gone. If this one dies, then, you know, it's essentially going to be the same thing as WCW, just not as big. If this one continues to go and they get a good TV deal on this and they're solid, then, you know, obviously they mean far more historically than WCW ever did, as high as WCW was because WCW died. But when WCW went against them, that was a bad period. I mean, you're talking about they went, you know, when their, their ascent, you know, you want to talk about bad WWE periods, 1992 to 1995, that was bad. That was the well, lowest again, of the low. Well, again, you're 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 talking about business wise. And, I'm and talking about everything wise. I'm talking we about had, more than that. We had I'm talking Shawn about every... Michaels and Bret Hart and Ric Flair as a world champion. I mean, that was way better than Constable Corbin and your one top babyface being booed at every building he's at and double digit declines year over year. What every the, single year, the eighteen from, to forty nine plummeting, the, plummeting. The, the, the 92 to 95 plummet was way worse. That company was, you know, by 90, by what year was it? 96? 96. They were, number. But aside from the fact they were losing money, they were they were confiscating the water coolers because they couldn't pay the water cooler yes, bill. Yes, they were doing terrible business. They were doing terrible business. But as a product. As a product. As a frickin- product, I was as a product, as a fan. As 1995, as a product, they were so behind the times. They were so far behind Japan. They were so far behind Mexico. The frickin' Mexicans came to the United States and beat them in, in Los Angeles on a regular basis, you know. I mean, could that have happened in 2019? Not a chance. But Nobody don't you could- remember 2019 where they would advertise a card for Raw and literally nothing would happen the next week? And none of the storylines ever tied together, ever, because every week he tore up the script and he did something totally different. Well, that's, and that's, there was that's, no consistency. And it was well, just the most excruciating three hours of nonsense. Yeah. Week after week after week. Yeah. It's horrible. Does that does that compare to ninety two to ninety five when that thing was dying? I mean, it was dying. It was you know, um, you know, you're talking about um, Raws and a thousand seat, you know, drawing a thousand people. You're talking about house shows drawing, you know, two thousand people, three thousand people. You know, on, you're talking about the Garden drawing seven thousand people. Yes, that you're, was you very know. bad. And that's why I mean, WCW took off in ninety five. Well, WCW and it's took why AEW took off. In 2019, because well, AW- WWE's product was atrocious. WWE, well, also AEW came in with a whole new crap, you know, group of stars. I mean, in TNA could have taken TNA could have done the same thing if they were open minded enough. But TNA's big thing was to do WWF, you know, with with well, their their idea was essentially that. There's all these WCW fans, so we're going to do, we're going to get the WCW wrestlers that Vince didn't take, Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, you know, these type of guys, and we're going to bring, get back all the WCW fans. They basically went to the past, which some could argue as far as AEW now was a detriment too by uh, doing too much of the same. But, you know, like, like when, when you had like Ring of Honor with guys like Brian Danielson and Samoa Joe and people like that, that were... You know, you could see they were super talented guys and they deserved something on the national stage. And TNA did use Joe to a degree, but they never let him be the star that, um, you know, the ex WCW guys were because their mentality was, well, these guys are so much more famous. And by doing so, they basically, you know, retarded the advancement of the, some guys. I remember them telling me with Danielson, it's like, oh, you know, he's not marketable at all. You know, I mean, that was just their feeling, even though he was killing it on the Indies. Like that stuff's not marketable on television. Brian Danielson, you know, I mean, they had that preconceived notion still that um, what gets over on the, you know, what what gets over 
um, in other places is irrelevant. And what got over to their fans was also irrelevant they were, they, because they always had the idea that, well, you know, like these fans are, you know, like in TNA, I mean, they would think that their fans, their loyal fans were their enemy because their loyal fans were cheering people who they didn't want them to cheer and they were reacting loud to people they didn't want them to react loud to and they weren't cheering the right people. And, um, you know, I mean, they had that thing, they had that mentality. And that's one of the reasons why they never, they had, they had periods where they had some success and they had some very good pay-per-views, but they never, um, they were never able to t turn the corner. And obviously they never could get to the level that, that, that these guys did. But the, um, the potential I think was there, not as much as in 2019, because the one thing with 2019 is you did have Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho, you know, coming off of that Tokyo Dome. And the Young Bucks were very hot on the indie scene. So you had new acts. And I mean, Moxley was very important, too. But you had new acts that were um, established. They had names on the underground. Um, and they could come in. And, and there was excitement to them that TNA was never able to get. So, I mean, it, 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 you know, it was a lot of things that happened. WWE being weak was, was certainly one of them. But it was also the excitement that underground pro wrestling had developed over the previous several years that had created the opening um, that really, you know, again, because of contracts being up and things like that, that there were, you know, like, number one, you did need, you did, you really needed the guy with the money um, and willing to lose money at first to build something really big. You need that. But without, if you didn't have like the Young Bucks and, and Omega and Jericho, if you didn't have those key guys, and you just went in there and tried to get, you know, go with the, the WWE stars from 10 years ago that weren't in WWE anymore, like TNA, you know, try to base it on, um, and use those as the key guys. Um, you know, and they did a little bit of that, but, you know, not, but, but they also focused on the new guys. Um, a lot of new guys, you know, they, they would have had the same success as TNA. I mean, and some will argue that what they've done now is similar to TNA, you know, and, you know, nothing again. The the one also difference is, is that in TNA, those top guys were, were, they went in there and they took it as a paycheck waiting to hear from Vince. And with AEW, while there certainly are exceptions and we all know who they are, there are a lot of guys who came in and, you know, with like, like, look at Sting. Look at Sting in, in TNA when he was younger and Sting in AEW. I mean, Sting in TNA was one of those guys. He was there. So he was fine. Sting in AEW, much, much older. He was out there, and he was like, he worked so hard. He didn't work as many dates. Well, he probably, you know, well, he didn't work quite as many dates. But he worked so hard because the young guys worked hard, and the atmosphere was different. Look at, like... Like, none of those guys that were ex-WWE guys that went into TNA, none of them worked like frickin' Adam Copeland's work and or John Moxley worked. I mean, there weren't one of them. They, you know, they were all there to, you know, hey, you know, we're, we're collecting a big paycheck and waiting to hear from Vince. And it's a completely... So that mentality, um, that mentality was also different. But, uh, you know, I mean, it's a really interesting period for AEW right now because between now and the end of the year, they're... You know, ultimately, if they are a big success or not a big success, no matter what happens in the last five years, they will either be at worst what happened to WCW or at best, uh, they are going to be around for a long, long time as a very successful company. And we don't know the answer yet. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.